Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am glad to be here in front of you one more time with the Word of God, and I trust that, as always, uh, God has been faithful, and uh, and keep He has kept us all under the shadow of His mighty wings, and that uh, we are unshaken, no matter what comes our way. Amen. 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 Praise God. Uh, we are going to continue our meditation in the Book of Acts, and um, let us read Acts chapter five. Verse 39, Acts chapter 5, verse 39. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest haply you be found even to fight against God. Praise God. So I am actually going to uh, continue the theme or topic that Minu started last week, um, and uh, just add a little bit to it, and so I apologize if a couple of the things I'm going to repeat, but I believe it's relevant, and God was leading me this way, so, um, so bear with me. So what's been happening uh, here is the beginning of, um, uh, beginning of the church, and there were, as Minu was talking about, he went through a long list of symptoms of what is called growing pains, right? He gave this acronym, which uh, unfortunately I won't be able to remember all of the letters, uh, but I know I remember pain as part of that. And so growing pains was part of what they experienced as a church that emerged out of nowhere, and, um, and they were in the midst of this environment at that time, that was completely opposed to everything they now stood for, right? Uh, so you will actually read, if you read earlier in the book of uh, Acts 5, uh, Peter was and John were in the prison, right? And, and an angel came and delivered uh, them, uh, him by the, uh, Peter by the night and, and told him, right? Uh, and they saw these wonderful miracles and he said, uh, and uh, stand in the middle of the temple and the preach the words of this life. So what life was he referring to? Because really, if you think about what they were about to face or what they were facing, there was nothing that they could be uh, find comfort in, nothing that they could find hope in. Uh, but yet, with joy and boldness, they were able to preach the words of this life. And that is what I really want to just talk a little bit about today, right? Um, as, as the apostles were and the new believers were in this environment, everything was opposed to them. There was nothing that they could put their trust in. So uh, if you put that first slide up, um, that'll help me. Um, it is like if you... Uh, if pl ever played uh, pool, um, it's right before you hit the balls, right? Uh, the, uh, the pool balls were all together, right? Uh, they were all uh, together as one. Uh, you know, they were, you know, the balls were all touching each other, and they had communion and fellowship. They, you know, maybe the number, number eight uh, was felt very secure because, uh, oh, don't go to that slide yet. Go, go back to that one. <laughs> um, they felt very secure uh, because all these other ones were surrounding me and, and just kept me, kept the black one very secure. And they had no idea what was about to happen. But God saw that his church could not explode in growth if each of those balls were stuck together and in one place, Right? So it doesn't matter who brought the persecution, but the white ball, that is a persecutor, which actually came from Saul, who would be Paul, was about to bring down and rain down uh, some, and wreak some havoc onto that unity, right? So, they, they, uh, so they, they had no clue that was about to happen, 
right? But they knew they were seeing the beginning of the opposition. They were always seeing the opposition from the leaders uh, of the church, but they had joy in the togetherness and fellowship, so they were fine. So then all of a sudden, the white ball showed up and did what? Now go to the second slide. They were scattered. They scattered all over the place, and now the things that they found comfort in, they, they could not probably reach, right? The people that they were familiar with, they could not uh, look for because they were separated from the things that they had found comfort in. And persecution was the tool that caused that to happen. Imagine if the church just remained in Jerusalem and they're all together, it was great, they were seeing miracles, but would they have spread the gospel to the, the, what they called as a then known world had not the white wall came and scattered them? Would they have? Right? So God used persecution to scatter the church. But each of those little balls went to their own place, right? As, it, as he promised, when the Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power, and then you shall be my witnesses where? In Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So as they were scattered, they went to all their own different places, and they took the gospel to those places, and it spread like wildfire wherever they went. Right? So, um, the reason I said this whole introduction is because I believe that we have reached a point um, in our uh, churches, uh, developed community, that we were all kind of this together, right? Until about middle of February, all to stuck together, feeling great, loved the fellowship, enjoyed the togetherness, and we love coming to church, sitting in the pews, singing songs. And all of these things. And suddenly, the white ball that was COVID came and scattered, right? Um, <laughs> so uh, that is not the only white ball that might come. Um, but we seem to have been shaken out of, out of our, uh, the things that we found comfort in. We were shaken out of what we held on to. And now, if you look at around the world, right, or in the... In, in the uh, in, uh, in America itself, we have reached such a point of uncertainty and fear that um, we have to uh, think for ourselves, where did we put our trust in, right? Um, and I, I don't want to cheapen the pulpit uh, by talking politics, so I won't, uh, but... But I have to really just say, our hope is not in Trump. Our hope is not in Biden or anybody else. But when I see that we have um, really not just our community uh, around the world have really, uh, there's a fear being sown amongst us that we are uh, afraid that what might happen to us uh, because somebody else than we thought and might win the election. Um, dear brothers and sisters, we are, our hope is not in the politics. I mean, both sides will lie to us to get our votes, okay? They'll say whatever they want to hear, whatever you want to hear in order to get one vote. That is all the extent of their faithfulness towards us. Do not put your trust in, in any politician. I mean, God didn't say that your, you know, your anchor of your soul shall be put in the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, right? Yes, we should do our civic duty, go vote, do all those things. But when it interferes with your joy and your peace, we have to question yourself, where did we put our trust in? Where did we put our peace and hope in? And, and I will go beyond that to even say, you know, this whole situation has shaken, right, everything that we have come to rely upon in the, the developed community, right? Our jobs are not secure, right? 
our, our, uh, you know, our health is not secure, our life is not secure. Everything seems to be, could be gone in a moment's notice. The things that we trusted in could have been gone in a moment's notice. So that's where we have to come back. We have to really search to know what was the basis of our entire life, right? And the only thing, the only person that our hope should have been and is in the person of Jesus Christ. It is not in a church building, right? The temple in the New Testament is our own body. The presence of God dwelling bodily in us is the temple of God. It is not in a church building. It is not it matter who wins the election in a month. It doesn't matter. Our hope, even if we lose our whole life or lose our whole possessions, our joy and our hope is in Christ. Even if I lose our health, as we sing, right? The Rogatal in Deha Motam Shai Chalu. Even if our body decays away with sickness, our hope is in Christ. It is in the person, in the person of Jesus Christ, our hope is anchored. It is not in any principles or doctrines because without Christ, those principles and doctrines that we believe ourselves, we teach our children, those are worthless unless you believe in the person of Jesus Christ. It is He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the door by whom we can enter into the presence of God. If you have forgotten that we have come to put our trust in Jesus Christ, we need to come back. It does not matter who wins the election. It does not. I mean, do your civic duty, but it does not matter which politician sits in Congress. Do not believe the lies. I hear, I mean, there's so many so-called prophecies circulating on YouTube and WhatsApp, and it, you know, fills us, it fills us with dread and fear about all of this uh, destruction that's about to come. It doesn't matter. Because our hope is in Christ. You, you know, our hope is in Christ. No matter what happens again around us, if the ground beneath our feet fall and shake and we fall through the earth, our hope is in Christ. Our, just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told Nebuchadnezzar, God, uh, oh king, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. You know, God is able to deliver us from this fire, your furnace that you built, this contraption that you built. God is able to save us from it. But even if he does not, I will not bow down to your image. I will not bow down to my job. I will not bow down to my health. I will not bow down to the Republican or the Democratic Party. I will not forget that I was called to love people no matter what they look like. I will not forget that I was called to pour my life out to other, for other people. I will not listen to the lies of the politicians. I will not bow down to this image the world has built and requires and demands that I must be submissive to. I will not. I am a Christian and my hope is rooted deep in the person of Jesus Christ. We have to come back to the hope in Christ. That is why, as Minu read last week, I will turn you to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. That by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, which who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor for, of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So this is, uh, Hebrews is saying the same thing I've just been saying, that there's two unchangeable things. Immutable means unchangeable. No matter what happens, it is unchangeable. It is impossible for God to lie. 
impossible. So when he made a promise, it will never ever be shaken. The second thing is that he made an oath on himself. That oath is unshakable. That he swore by himself because there was no greater to swear by. And he swore upon himself and said that we are heirs according to the promise. And that is a promise. So no matter what we lose in this world, no matter how grim, or if you can put that last slide up, we are like a ship that is set our anchor upon the solid rock. This anchor uh, in Malayalam, it says what? Nankuram. Our anchor is gone deep and deep into the bottom of the seafloor and has hit the solid rock and the rock is Christ. So no matter what storms or waves toss us around, even if that ship is destroyed, we ourselves are connected to that anchor, by that anchor, to the rock that is Christ. And so that's what we have to remember, that the promise of Christ is what we believe in, not the political climate, not the security of the homes we live in. Nothing that we have on this earth that we see with our eyes is promised to us. The only thing that is promised to us is the, the inheritance in Jesus Christ our Lord. That is why if you read in Habakkuk chapter 3, and I'll invite the worship team to come forward. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17. And 18 and 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he'll make me to walk upon mine high places. To the chief singer on my stringed instrument. Can we as Habakkuk say today with joy and hope with our anchor rooted in Christ. Say that I will joy in the God of my strength. If there is no fig tree. If there is no fruit from the fig tree. There is no fruit in the vines. The, all the things I labored for have been lost. All the things that I have labored for that is yielding no meat. And everything that I have lo- gained in this world has been lost. As we read the psalm, can we say, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? It doesn't matter what, what happens in this world in, in a month. It doesn't matter what happens to us or our jobs or health. Because our hope is in Jesus Christ, our Lord. May his name be glorified.